Welcome back to day-to-day -day chess games analysis with Sabina. The first game of round three of the World Cup in Baku was played today, and I started noticing that the more the tournament advances, the more draws we see. And it's probably because of the fatigue and the stress that accumulates uh, because of the structure of this competition. Uh, with the tiebreakers taking a lot of time and energy for from the players. Um, however, we as the spectators uh, get to enjoy the misses and the blunders the players make and have. And um, I don't say this in a sarcastic way, but on the contrary, I want to emphasize that we are all human. And whether we are on the top or not, everybody is prone to making mistakes. So hopefully this will be a good... Um, advice a good uh, a good thing to see so that we we as chess players uh, are less tough on ourselves because you know the the ones who are on top they make mistakes too so anyways lots of cool games today although there were just uh, a lot of draws but there are some some nice wins as well so i couldn't decide which game to choose for the day and finally i settled for the one between Grandmaster Alexander Grishchuk and Grandmaster Pavel Elyanov. Both of them top chess players, one of them from Russia, the other one from Ukraine. And in this game, Grishchuk went for c4, which is not his usual um, uh, starting move. Mostly he plays d4, e4, knight f3. So with c4 probably was a preparation thinking that Elyanov plays the system with d5, e6 and the knight in f6. So, and that's exactly what happened in the game. And here we have a reversed Benoni. We can think of it that way, or some English, however you prefer, D takes E4. And here white um, takes his queen out early in the game, but the only reason is uh, to, get, to get his pawn back. Knight D7, queen takes E4. And here black has various plans. One of them is to play B6, E5, Bishop B7. Another one is try to, to be even more active and try to play with a6, b5. Uh, there were some, some games, there were games in both, both of the systems. Elianov uh, chose to play c5 in this position to get the control over the d4 square and um, uh, make sure when white is going to play d4, there's going to be a trade eventually. Castle b6. Knight c3, there's nothing happening on this diagonal here. There's always rook b8, or sometimes there's even uh, an exchange sacrifice for from um, from black, but here there's nothing because knight e5, I can just capture the knight. So knight c3, bishop b7, d4. So white finally puts a pawn, the pawn in the center and uh, opens up his bishop to develop and... Um, Black here has two choices, more important choices. One of them is rook c8, to put the rook on the same file as the queen. It's always annoying for your opponent. And another idea is a6, which is actually a move that Elianov played before against Hare Krishna. And um, it, it kind of forces white to make a decision to take here in c5 now, because maybe b5, c4 is coming. So black gets some, some space on that. Uh, queen side, maybe not even b5, c4, maybe b5, then capture, and his pieces will have more more space with the knight to b6 and such. Uh, but for this game, he went for rook c8. And here, the most popular popular moves are rook d1, which is natural to put the rook on the file, and we're not worried about this because just queen just takes back. Or bishop g5, and the idea of bishop g5 is the uh, same. If he takes, you take back. And if bishop c5, the queen goes on the other side of the board. And after castle, rook d1, white has an okay position. It's probably equal after queen e8, knight e5, trying to, to trade some pieces. There's this capture, and you have your force to take. And if the knight takes, king takes g2. This seems quite uh, quite equal to me. Um, but uh, Grishchuk, okay, he had white, and he's a stronger player, so he didn't want to he didn't want to go for for the draw maybe, and uh, he had this move prepared, possibly, queen d3. Uh, and it's a novelty, I haven't found any games with queen d3 here. I'm just getting out of the, um, from the, the spin here, and in the same time against the capture, which actually happened in the game, I want to capture with the knight, not with the queen. So I want to 
keep my queen safe at home and just uh, bring this knight towards b5, d6. After takes, takes, bishop b4, uh, Grishchuk played knight b5. And now he has two threads, one of them, of course, the pawn, and the other one knight d6 to, to exchange the knight for the bishop. And in this position, Alyanov went for a6, after which, in my opinion, white has a small advantage. But uh, here, with some analysis, um, castle, I think, was possible, because white cannot capture the pawn. And knight d6, okay, I'm not forced to give away my bishop. Or even if I do, now I castle compared to the other line. But if takes here, I want to take this knight. And you cannot capture the rook. I mean, you can, but I have this good bishop e5 move. And uh, knight a7 is not possible because of knight, a uh, queen a8 check knight. And this knight is kind of trapped here, so you have to play knight d6, and here there's knight c5. Controlling all of your uh, squares for that knight and uh, taking your queen too. So you only have knight f7 here, and then I'll just trade and, and take your knight. And this position is quite good for black, in my opinion. So in case of... Uh, after bishop c3, not taking the rook, but taking this bishop in uh, in c3, thinking, oh, I have a pawn up, I don't need to go for more. There's rook c5 here, very good move. The rook is, is controlling the squares of the knight, and I'm also threatening queen a8 check. Knight b5 is forced, and now still queen a8. And no matter what you play, let's say f3, I have knight e5. Oops. I don't know why it says that. Knight e5. Queen b1, queen a4. And um, um, all of white's pieces are still on the first rank. Uh, my knights are active. All of my pieces are active, in fact. And this pawn is going to be lost eventually. Uh, besides, this one is weak as well. So maybe this, this uh, with some analysis, could be a new, a new line to be played for black. But um, anyways, uh, Elianov went for a6 takes takes and now queen e7 black really tries to capture to castle here uh queen d3 taking a6 b5 bishop f4 again i'm not letting you castle because i have bishop here e5 also this was an attracting move let's say because in an end game this pawn could be attacked by it's on the same color as my bishop bishop g5 now i'm threatening some Oops, sorry. I'm turning some knight d5, h6, knight d5, and um, Grishuk went for the trade with the idea that now the king is in the center, so I have this queen a3 move. Very good. Keeping you from castling, and also I have some rook c1 ideas or rook d1, d6, the good position. So black has to hurry here. He, can't, he needs to castle or bring his king to safety somehow. So he played rook c2, and now queen c6 check. King g1, queen c5. So I'm okay to trade the queens. The rook endgame should be a draw. Um, and now Grishchuk took the pawn. Uh, immediately, Elianov castled. He does not want to deal with any kind of checks on the 8th rank or something. Now the king is uh, has been brought to safety. And now uh, white has two choices. One is to play a4 and go for the past pawn, but in the same time he would give away back his free pawn, or or play e3. But if he plays e3 to try to keep his uh, pawn up, black can simply play b4, which is a very nice blocking boom move of, of, of white's majority. So it will be very hard for white to create a past pawn now. And even if you try to play rook d1 to activate your rook, I can play rook c8. I'm not... I'm uh, I'm not worried in this position. And next move, I can try to trade the queens and then defend my b pawn, and you'll never be able to to create anything. So this would have led to a draw, most likely. Um, so uh, Grishchuk is a stronger player, so he was definitely playing for some for a win here. So he went for a4. Rook takes e2. And now, of course, we don't want to trade the queens and enter this endgame, which is clearly draw. So he played a5. I mean, I'm going for the free pass pawn. E4. Why E4? Well, here's black's majority on the queen side. In the same time, this pawn seems like it's going to go really fast towards, towards the, 
the promoting square. So black has to start creating some mating threats on the king side to switch the play on this side and you know eventually trade some pieces and make a draw. Rook e1 takes takes f5 check king h7 rook d1 trying to activate my rook rook f6 now queen d5 i'm happy to trade queens now and contrary to all of the uh, sayings that all of the rook end games are drawn no not at all this would be a blunder because after rook takes d5 um you have no way to protect this pawn and if you play before rook b5 and you might think that you can trade this pawn for this pawn with rook a6, but in fact you're giving me the other one. So um, this wouldn't have been good for, for Elianov, so he played queen c2. He needs to keep his rook active. Rook d2, queen c3. Rook a2. Check this. And now f4. Of course, we're starting the progress on the king, queen's, the king side. a6, f3. Check. King h3 is the only move. And now, big blunder, big, big blunder, rook g6. Um, crazy here. e3 had to be played um, to, to trade the pieces and make a draw. I mean, this pawn is going for a queen. If rook e4, or queen e4 check, just rook g6. And if you take either of the pawns, uh, there's going to be a trade here. If you take that one, okay, you have to take that one. The other one is probably some mating here. I take, and when you take, I take in a6, totally draw. But he played rook g6, having thinking maybe some checks here, but there's nothing, really. So what could have white played to win this? Think for a second or pause the video. a7. And now white is winning. There's nothing you can do. If you give me this check in h4, queen g2, h3, and you have nothing. My Queen, my pawn is promoting. If you take, I just take back. Nothing, nothing. You take my rook, check, and I promote. Uh, and if instead, when a7, if you play queen g1, thinking, okay, now I have queen g2, queen takes h2 mate, then I have this very good queen f5 to protect my king there. If queen g2 up, queen h3, after which you have no way of stopping the promotion. So crazy, crazy. But Grishuk didn't go for that. He played king h4. Blunder. After this, black again could have equalized. And how? With e3. Because again, this capture, I just take in f2. And uh, you take and I take. We had this position before. He played queen b4, thinking, oh, wait, I'm not going to play e3 directly. I'm going to bring my queen to have this threat with tempo. But now, again, white could win. Try to find it here. And I'm telling you, it's not king h3. Queen f5, very good. If a, e3 check, now I have king h5. Crazy, crazy move, but this actually is winning because <laughs> your rook is uh, in trouble. Queen d6, e, a7. And if you push e2 or f2, I just uh, I just play rook a1 to stop that. If you take... Um, if you take in uh, in f2, I, I promote, and if you promote, I have this move, and your rook is going to be lost. Crazy. He played king h3, and now black is winning. Rook g5, queen c5, threatening rook h5 mate. a7, h5, another good move. White is forced to take because there are mates coming. Now, very beautiful, queen c8, queen a8, and now... It's crazy. This position is crazy. It's um, here after this. White played king e3, but um, here instead of king e3, I'm wondering if h6 doesn't make a draw. Um, and if black doesn't find a way, it actually could happen that this, this, now you cannot take the pawn because there's rook h7. And the only move that wins is e3. Check takes it's crazy you're actually giving a pawn away to be able to give checks and take your queen out if you just play king d7 i can just blockade your pawn in e4 and now i just start pushing my pawn and uh, you will be blocked like at some point i bring my pawn towards a to h6 the rook in a6 and you have no progress with black but okay this is not very easy to see 
um, British Duke play King E3 and the position, the game just finished here. I hope you enjoyed this game. Stay tuned. For